Okay, what we have so far is that the game will recognize the first player as a host, and is going to associate the tank to player 1. If a second player joins, he will only see the host tank. But since we haven't fixed the controls, player 2 can still try to move the tank. First, create a subgroup host controls inside the host group. There, check if tank multi ID equals the multiplayer ID of the host. That way, we only control our tank. This condition will replace the player number check in the previous code, and then move all the controls inside this new group. One more thing here, create a variable shooter multi in the bullet object and set it to multiplayer ID when bullet is shot. This will replace the previous code. Okay, you might have noticed that if we shoot, you see that the tank hits itself. To fix that, go into the collision actions and change bullet shooter by bullet shooter multi and tank player number to tank multi ID. Ok, it's time to focus on player 2. We destroy the tank when the peer joined the room, and it is spawned by the host. On the host side, we need to create a second player during runtime. So first, delete the second tank. So when those tanks are created, we need to identify them in the pure side too. So on tank created, we set multi ID to multiplayer peer ID. And associate tank with peer multiplayer peer ID. Then if multi ID equals my ID, we enable local input prediction to get a smoother movement. And we set animation to P2. Then on the host group, 
When piers connected, we create the second tank. Rotate it, set multi ID to peer ID, and associate tank with peer multiplayer peer ID. And also we change the animation. In summary, 1. Host creates the game, 2. Peer joins, 3. Host creates player 1's tank in peer side, 4. Peer assigns the first created tank to the player, 5. Since the host detected a joined peer, now it creates the second tank, 6. That tank is associated to the peer in both host and peer sides. <laughs>